More breaking news tonight. A man now free after more than a decade long battle to clear his name. Mark Carver was once given a life sentence in the death of UNC Charlotte student Ira Yarmolenko, who was murdered in 2008. Well, now 14 years later, a district attorney has dropped the murder charges. Our Ken Lemon has been following every step in Carver's fight to finally prove his innocence. And Ken, you have been with Carver during the roller coaster of developments. And ironically, photographer Bill Bruce behind the camera right now and I were together here when Mark Carver walked out of jail three years ago. The judge overturned his convi conviction. Since then, he's been waiting on pins and needles to hear whether the, the uh, DA will retry this case. That is all over now. There was so much joy in every step to this office where the GPS okay. monitor was removed from Mark Carver's ankle. They probably had Mark was too nervous to speak today, but his sister-in-law relayed his sentiment to us. Thank God. Thank God. That monitor has restricted Carver from leaving the state even after a judge determined there were questions about the testing of DNA and other flaws in his 2011 conviction. Carver served eight years of a life sentence that was cut short but his life still on hold for the possibility of a retrial for the 2008 murder of UNC Charlotte student Ira Yamalenko. She was found strangled next to her car on the banks of the Catawba River. It's torture. I mean, he can't, he's limited to where he can go, what he can do. The district attorney issued a dismissal saying upon retesting and re-examination of the physical evidence, there is no longer sufficient DNA evidence to support the charge. And that little girl Chris Muma, the attorney who fought to get Carver's conviction overturned, joined him via video from Raleigh. I wish I could be there to give him a big hug. She told me she couldn't comment on the reason for the dismissal, but it backs up her original claim. Our position has been from the moment we took this case that Mark's DNA was not on anything. <laughs> she celebrated Mark Carver's first steps as a free man. The DA hasn't commented on the on the decision to dismiss charges in this case. Both Muma and Carver's uh, family says that this is not over. They say someone has to be held accountable for Ira Yarmolenko's death. We reached out and got in contact with her brother, Pavel Yarmolenko, who we've talked to in the past. And, and Pavel says he's still absorbing all of this, and he hopes to release some sort of statement later on. Erica. Yes, our Ken Lemon. Ken, you've been dedicated to this case, covering it for our viewers literally for years. Thank you for that update. Now, this case again has stretched more than a decade. It was back in May of 2008 when Mark Carver and his cousin Neil Casada found Ira Yarmolenko's body along the banks of the Catawba River. Well, that December, they were arrested and charged with murder. In 2011, a jury found Carver guilty, but he has always maintained his innocence. Casada died a day before his own trial. Then in 2019, a judge ordered a new trial and Carver released from prison, saying that Carver's original attorney made several significant mistakes in the trial. The state then appealed that decision, and last year, a court of appeals judge dismissed the case. And then earlier this year, the Gaston County District Attorney said that he wanted to retest the critical DNA that prosecutors say put Mark Carver at the murder scene. Today, the DA dismissed all charges. We can't lose sight of the fact, of course, that an innocent college student lost her life. And now more than a decade later, no one has faced justice for her death. Through the years, Ira Lomelenko's brother told us he has been following everything that's happened here from his home in the D.C. area, but he did not want to talk about the case today. He did tell us at the end of the original trial that Carver's conviction was justice served. Our Ken Lemon was the first to break this story today. We sent out an alert through our WSOC News app. Make sure you have the app downloaded on your cell phone and then turn on those push notifications.